zero to 12 weeks. Um, these are like five, these are what I call the five everyday needs. So the first word I'm going to take you through is the word for hunger. <coughs> so with this word, your baby becomes hungry and it produces a ne sound. You'll find, can see the tongue. Yeah, you can, and you can see the tongue going in the sucking motion mm. along the roof of their mouth. But what you're listening for is actually the N part of this sound. Okay, so this next word is the word ow. So it's more of an owl sound. Some people describe it like a cat, but I, I never heard that. that. It's like us, you know, when we have our first yawn in the evening, if we go to bed then, if we're lucky enough, and, you know, <laughs> um, if we go to um, bed then, we drop off straight away, you know, it's not hard. But if we wait that half an hour longer or that little bit longer, um, you know, it's really hard to go to sleep. When you hear the word owl, this is when you'll help them to go to sleep. You have to be careful when you say put to sleep in America. It's quite a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, I did that on the Oprah show and it was like, silence. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the third word. And this is the word eh. And you've all heard it. I heard it when I walked in. And this is the word for birthing. So this is made when there's a reflex in your chest and when and it's trying to get the air out you'll find you know sometimes if your baby's asleep and you'll hear eh, eh, eh. and so you'll go in if you pick them up give them a burp you can put them back down and they'll go off to sleep often you know we make the mistake of um, thinking that they're awake and we feed them and then we've actually woken them up rather than just getting rid of the problem which was the air bubble and putting them down. Although um, my wife and I are uh, um, Australian born, yep. we're fully Chinese, that looks Melanie fully Chinese. Yep. Should that influence the way that, um, will, will that change the way that she pronounces those, those sounds? All human babies will have the same reflexes and or add sound to the same reflexes and they all produce the same, the same words. To, even if you are out in, the, you know, in Africa or in Turkey or wherever, mm -hmm. it's the same. But it's a great question. <laughs> so we have... So when you're getting a mix like this, you just need to listen a bit longer. And, um, you know, eventually that one word will come a lot clearer than the others. Which means that she's tired, like it's just like we just had before with the other baby. She's tired but she wants to go to sleep sucking on something. So this next word is the air word and you're listening for the R part of the sound. And this is the reflex in the lower intestines obviously pushing down. And that produces the air word. And when, do you hear, when you hear this word, um, that means they have lower, lower wind. <coughs> so 
obviously when your baby's saying the air word, there's no hope of them going to sleep. <laughs> so um, the best thing to do is literally to alleviate that, um, you know, the discomfort that they're feeling. So a lot of the colic holds also work with that word. So you're bicycling their legs, things like that. The next word is the word he. And this is the word for discomfort. And this is a skin reflex. So if your baby is too hot or too cold, um, if they need their nappy changed, if, um, if their clothes are too tight. So the word is he. But I, I still quite, can't quite pick the, the different cries, but with training, I think I'll be able to uh, hear, understand her language. If it works, um, it's going to make us even more relaxed <laughs> and life, um, yeah, a little bit more, uh, well, should I say easier, yeah. Yeah, people look at you like you don't know how to control your child or... So it's a bit embarrassing, but... Yeah, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. And I run a business as well, you know, so I'm like, I'm a pretty capable sort of person, but then to have a baby who's just... You just don't know what they want. It's awful. It's the worst feeling. Mm. And everyone says something different as well, and, you know, I spend my whole time looking up that baby love book. Yeah, I just feel hopeless a lot of the time. Okay, this is um, the DVD that's going home. So we've given our test team one week to see if Priscilla's crash course in baby listening is any good, whether it makes being a parent any easier. <laughs> Yum bum 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 b